Good evening. Dr. Keith Rowley, leader of the opposition, political leader of the People's National Movement, and as I commonly refer to him, the next Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. My fellow speaker, Mr. Roger Gopal, who I've had the pr pleasure of meeting tonight. And to all of you residents who have taken time out of your busy daily schedules to join us here tonight, much appreciated. Thank you all for the privilege and the honor and the opportunity to have a conversation with you all tonight. This is not a PNM conversation. This is a conversation to each one of you all as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. It's a personal conversation, a conversation as to why I thought it was time to stand up and be counted, time to get involved, and what I would like to persuade you all to also do. The message here tonight is not a PNM message, although we will get into conversation and you all will engage us in PNM policies, what we have planned, and how we plan to govern this country in at least the next five years. The message is for you, who are you citizens who are concerned about Trinidad and Tobago. This is our country. This is our treasury. These are our resources. It is the future of our children, and for some of you, your grandchildren. And we must be concerned about what is taking place in our country and what has been taking place in our country. It is about us. It is about, it's not about me, it's not about Dr. Rowley, and it's not about the other PNM candidates. It's about us, the right-thinking citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Honest, decent, God-fearing, law-abiding, hard-working, and patriotic citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. I would trust that each and every one of you all here today and those following us fall into this category of what is a right-thinking member and citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. A little bit about my personal testimony. Having seen what has taken place in the last five years, because we've crossed the five-year threshold now, I was not prepared to sit back anymore. I was given an opportunity in March of last year by Dr. Rowley, and one of his legacies will be that he's given young people opportunities. I am a young professional, as you heard. I am someone who is very concerned about the state of Trinidad and Tobago, concerned about the state of our economy, and concerned about what has been going on. The fear of our citizens, when they come and they tell us stories about what is taking place, and the fear that they don't want to come forward and take any legal action or to go public because they're afraid of victimization and what will be done to them. I don't think there's one person who can honestly defend what is taking place in our country right now. We have had warnings from international organizations such as Moody's. A lot of you all in this crowd here tonight would also be aware that international security consultants and those who analyze on an international scale and level the political state of a country have warned some of the multinationals here in Trinidad and Tobago about a deterioration and an absolute lack of respect for the rule of law. And if you don't know about it, you should know about it. The international community is looking at Trinidad and Tobago and they're not pleased. So if the international community is looking at us and they're warning people about us, you all as citizens, me as a citizen, shouldn't we also be concerned Shouldn't we also be engaging in doing what it is that we can in our own way to take back Trinidad and Tobago? This is not about party politics, people, in my respectful opinion. This is about a call, and a call that your small children and your grandchildren, as you put them to sleep at night, are making to you. What about their futures? What about the futures of our children? What has happened with the $400 billion that have been spent in the last five years in unprecedented manners. Can any citizen of Trinidad and Tobago really be satisfied? The answer to that must be no. I am not satisfied. Why would any one of us give up a comfortable private life?
to get involved, it could only be because it's time to take back our country and time to get involved and stand up and be counted. You know, I want to tell you all, and, and this, is a, this is off script tonight. When Dr. Rowley asked me to get involved in public life and in frontline politics, it didn't take very much thought on my part because I'm an idealistic person. Obviously naive as well in certain ways. But I jumped in because I thought I could make a change. I could make a difference. I thought, you know, I am going to go and I'm going to make the personal sacrifice and I'm going to do what I can. And since October last year, I've been walking in my constituency. And I have an interesting constituency because I have the very poor, underdeveloped east port of Spain up to Lavantil and Mova come across into the St. Anne's Cascade and then the areas like St. Clair, Federation Park, and um, Ellerslie Park. So you have the two extremes. And what I saw, I wish I could broadcast to each one of you all here tonight, because every single one of us here tonight is privileged. We're privileged not only from our wealth position or being comfortable position, but we're privileged because at night, we can go home and have a roof over our heads. In the morning, you can wake up and you know you're gonna have something to eat. You may not know what, but you know you have something to eat. There are still people in our country who don't have those basic necessities. That saddened me. I've been given an opportunity to see that side of life. And what it's done for me is bolstered me even more to go forward and to try and make a difference. But you know what's the frightening part? And I saw this a few months ago with the nasty attacks on Dr. Rowley. And we all sit here and until it happens in your own backyard, you don't really understand it. I have seen the nastiest of attacks on Dr. Rowley, and by extension on his family. And as citizens, we've sat down and we've been too quiet about it. We've accepted it. And for too long, we've accepted a nasty politics. And when I thought about it, because I experienced it on Friday gone, that I have given up my life, my five-year-old son crying tonight when I was leaving home and saying, Daddy, you're always going now. And I'm telling him, son, I have to go and I have to join Dr. Rowley. And then my eight-year-old son standing up and saying, Daddy's going to try and make the country better. That, that heartened me. I was sad to see my son cry, but at least the older one said, Daddy's going to do good. And every one of us have to be prepared to do in whatever way we can, because we all have different roles to do what we can to better society. And one message I want to get through to you all tonight, it is time you all as citizens of Trinidad and Tobago stand up for what is right. Because when right thinking people like yourselves sit down quietly in the comfort of your homes, your air conditioned boardrooms, your offices, and, and just complain internally, it's not bettering the country. It is time that you all stand up, you exercise your right to vote, we'll come to that. But it's time that you all start talking amongst yourselves and reintroducing into society what is right, integrity, morality. And start by not accepting that people can just go out and scully and sullify the good names of people. And that's one of the reasons I'm prepared to stand up behind Dr. Rowley. It's not because he's going to be the next prime minister, but the character of the man and what he has shown to us, the nation, and what he's been through. I only got a small taste of it. And to think what he has been through for all of these years and that crucifixion of him by the other side. It saddened me that we as a society sit down and we haven't protested. And I don't mean by protesting out in the street. I don't mean by standing up and, and screaming at street corners but letting people know this is unacceptable. If the newspapers know and the media know that we're no longer prepared to accept the scandal, and as we in Trinidad say, the bubble, and these people lie. They have absolutely no hesitation in lying about a person and their characters I've learned. They will just make up a blatant lie as we've experienced in the past few years. And you know what? People ask me why you'd get involved in the PNM. It's for a number of reasons. But I tell you something. The PNM does not behave in that manner. 
I have been asking the question over the past few weeks internally. You know, we have information of so much wrongdoing in this country. We have information on so much stealing, so much corruption, and so much underhand being done by those on the other side. And you never see us stand up and just go on about it. And if we say something, anything we say, we have the documentation behind what we say. They are not like that. They have no care in the world. They will do everything to destroy us. And until the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, such as yourselves, stand up and form a line of protection for what is right and what is good, how do you expect good people to come forward? It is extremely difficult. It is extremely difficult to convince yourself as an individual to put yourself on the front line and put yourself in harm's way and your family in harm's way, knowing that the people you're dealing with don't care. They don't have a care in the world about what they do to you, how they lie about you, and try to destroy your reputation. But that can only happen if we as a society accept it and allow it. You all have a serious responsibility, in my humble opinion, because you all are the leaders of our society. Every single one of you all here leads in your own sphere. And you all have an important duty in your workplaces, in your community, in your homes, in your interactions with your friends to get the conversation going. To get the conversation going about, is this what you're prepared to take for another five years? Do you think this country could take this for another five years? I think that's a very, very simple answer if you're being objective. The answer is no. And you all have a responsibility and a duty, in my opinion, to get out there and to stand brave and not just run for cover. Because there's strength in numbers and there's unity in numbers. And until the right people in society stand up and start leading the charge and taking personal responsibility, and in every decision you make, in your own life, trying to make what is the right decision. We won't get it right. We won't get it right all the time. We're all going to make mistakes. But we have to do the best that we can. Whilst I've been walking, and this is something I was completely unprepared for, I tell people I'm not prepared to make any promises. Because, of course, people come up to you, they want a house, they want this, they want that. Everybody wants something. I immediately change the conversation around from two, two perspectives. I say, first of all, I'm not going to make any promises because I'm not prepared to break any promises. But I'm prepared to give my best and to do the best because that's, if that's within my control. Nobody could stop me from doing my best, even though they try. And the second thing I'm prepared to do is I'm prepared to work with the community, to do what I can with the community to facilitate it and to change the conversation. So after about the third walk of... I ain't get a house, I want this, where my jersey, where my this. I began changing the conversation and I've gotten a good reaction. The conversation now goes, well, hold on. Let's talk about what you can do for your community. Let's talk about what you could do to just better your environment and how can I help you? I can't give you, but how can I help you? And I think if we start that type of conversation, it's a start and everything I've realized has to be baby steps. I'd just like to briefly say that we can't leave Trinidad and Tobago as it is presently, in my opinion. I'm being told that I have to wrap up. I thought 15 minutes would be longer. And I just want to leave you all with a, a few quick bullet points. You had life sport at $400 million with a $36 million payment to a man who said, I'm not giving you back a cent. We've had NGC going from six, their communications department from $67 million to $200 million. They tell us they're going to have an audit. We've heard nothing about the audit. We have NEC with the $60 million. They tell us, oh, we've recovered some. Everything dies. We've had the Section 34, an attorney general being removed for witness tampering. Who should know the law better? I sat in Senate when we passed that act to make it illegal to tamper with somebody in civil and criminal proceedings. And we as a society continue to sit down. And my, my only assessment of it is because we're numb. We've become accustomed to scandal after scandal and to just being abused. Don't accept it anymore, people. It's a very, very simple message. Each and every one of us have to be prepared to step out of our comfort zone. And that's my challenge to you all here tonight. 
step out of your comfort zone and do what is right. And I think that simple message, go out and vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. But you do what you think is right for your children and your grandchildren. And step out in your own personal lives of your comfort zone. And when people are doing wrong, call them out on it. And challenge people to do what is right. I wish I had some more time to, to, to continue the conversation. We'll continue it when we get up there. You'll be hearing from me should I be provided with the opportunity in the months to come as we get into full election battle. But I, w I would like you all to go away here tonight knowing that there's some people who are brave enough, but we can only get this thing done with good people behind you all. Because it's not easy, and Dr. Rowley would have walked this road for a long part of his career. It's not easy when you're taking licks for something you know you haven't done, and you turn around and there's no one there. But I am prepared to do it, and I'm going to do it, and I've done it. And I invite every single one of you all here tonight to join what is right and what is good and step out of your comfort zones. Thank you all very much.